Yes. Do you have a target date for publication? The I day can't wait to get my hands on pool. it. The day the pools open back up. <laughs> oh, um, oh, gee, that's going to be too busy every day. Well, <laughs> yeah, we've been hanging out that day, but that's when I, I want to have it. Uh, I got it mostly done. Um, and I, you know, we defined a. That's a good target, though. It's a good target, right? Um, and so I. I'm hoping that happen. You know, I'm working with a publisher, so we'll see if we can get that. You know, I have a particular idea of how I want it designed and how I want it done. So uh, this will be my fourth book. So I uh, hope we can get it done. Oh, that's massive with me. It's like all those glasses, the fancy glasses, all that has to be sewn by hand. Oh yeah. Well, no, I mean, there were treadle machines. There were treadle machines. And there were butterick patterns. And um, every woman, every white woman, and probably some black women, but every white woman had at home a dressmaker and a form that was exactly her size. So all your, you, all your measurements were done. And then they, they adjusted so that you got a little heavy or a little skinny or you could adjust it. Um, and they had dressmakers. And actually, I find uh, dressmaking, the whole culture of dressmaking, was a woman's work because men couldn't, couldn't fit a woman. So it had to be a woman dressmaker. There weren't many dressmakers. And men weren't allowed in the, in the dressing rooms. Um, so that whole culture of dressmaking is quite a fascinating uh, bit of history. So any other questions? Yeah. Do you, want, do you want to say something about where the quilts and textiles are now? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I finally twisted um, Calista's arm, and she came to realize how important the two quilts that she showed me were after we spent a lot of time analyzing them and, and photographing them. And uh, we donated them to, um, uh, to Williamsburg. To, uh, there are the Abbey Elders. To the Abbey Elders, yeah. And so they are there uh, forever. Mm -hmm. And they are taken care of. Yeah. Are there existing examples of the little suits that Sherdell Pryor made in three different sizes for the ladies to wear in the ladies' back? Mm. Are there patterns for her? No, are there existing examples? Well, I have a couple of pictures, but I don't know if they're wearing the right thing. If they're wearing the ones you're talking about. <clears throat> very, very simple. I forget the name of them. Steam. Straight up the middle, right? I mean, they're they're straight, to get the right fit. white, mm. right? Yes, uh, you mentioned that there was uh, extensive photography um, for your upcoming book. Where did you end up locating a lot of that? Because it doesn't seem to be in, in the historical society. Many, it seems like the, the photos available in our local resources for the old hotel are pretty limited. They are. They are. I have been fortunate to find them uh, through various connections of individuals who have them. We have some with the historical society. Um, and I've got a couple of sort of private sources who are going to uh, help with you. Uh, yes. As far as the women uh, welcome that um, shared their problem, uh -huh. I worked at Jeffrey Cools and they had basically fallen apart. Yeah. So the new ones were right. Thank you. I have a perfect for that moment of war. I'll donate it so okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Do I need to the historical society and what you need to do? If they That's a good them. idea. Yes. Okay. Then I'll go with that. Okay. Yes. In your studies through Southwest Virginia and including this area through Appalachia. Um, did it, does it appear that there are like local traditions
him or friends or you know, is it more some kind of the same world? Well, Southwest Virginia really had a huge um, culture of <clears throat> coverlet weaving, older shop coverlet weaving <coughs> by individuals uh, and families. They did it and not what had been written before, what had been written before I started working was that Appalachian women were poor and critical and they slept under these coverlets because they couldn't afford money to make a quilt. A quilt is way easier to make than to weave an overshot coverlet. In fact, they had been making coverlets and they passed uh, drafts down. Uh, the drafting of a loom to make a coverlet is, is the most difficult part. So they kept doing some kind of the same pattern. So I was able to follow patterns and people. And I held documentation sessions in libraries and school church gyms and stuff like that for it would come out in the paper and they would bring me just bags of stuff. Some good, some not good. But it but nobody ever cared about that. Everybody cared about the guns, the buildings. You know, but, but, but people didn't have to get rid of textiles. They disintegrated. But women put them in the bottom drawer. Where if people put them in a trunk. They weren't worth anything. You had to sell the land. You had to sell the guns. You had to do stuff like that. But the textiles were just, just people cared about them, but they didn't think it was valuable. And so I was able to find a great many Predators have written about him. Probably the oldest thing was a woman in Watauga uh, County, Valley Cruz, South Carolina, uh, Mary Shore Mass. And she grew the flax. She spun, uh, she grew the cotton. She spun the fibers. She wove a very Formal suit of the time that came to China and made the fact made it into a suit for her husband. Because we know that he wore it, and because he died in 1820, we know that that was the time that I took it to, um, to have it. Um, I that I um, take on one or two fibers and, and figure out the dirt that it was from. To all kinds of things that you can find in textiles. Uh, my cross was a friend of mine had a, 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 a lecture to this group of my cross. The first thing to know is we got to be able to say this name <laughs> easily <laughs> because we're in the my cross. But um, so I've, I've been able to find a, a, a lot of interesting things. Uh, her loom, that woman's loom, then pass down the road. Uh, granddaughter who wove for the Woodrow Wilson White House. She wove uh, a huge rug that was uh, in the White House because Ellen Axel Wilson, the first wife of, of President Wilson, was um, interested in promoting Appalachian craft. And so she uh, got three women to do textiles, but that probably. The uh, chair and the fabric and the scrub and so and the castle. So this has just been so many wonderful things. There's always something there. Yeah. I, I mean, what is the what is the name of your first book? Appalachian textile art from Southern Appalachia. Textile art from oh. Southern Appalachia: The Quiet Work of Women. Any other questions? I, I've sort of gone on and on about a lot of things. I have really enjoyed uh, meeting Felissa. I am honored with her friendship and her willingness to let me tell her family story. Um, but with her help, I mean, I couldn't have done any of it. Um, I think there really should be a plaque out there. <laughs> National treasure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
somebody else. Okay? Thank you very much.